As the Ubris come on up for our beginning of our worship, we welcome you to First Presbyterian Church and this Christmas Eve candlelight worship. Please stand as we join in our call to worship. As we light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, let us remember that Jesus is the hope of the world. Prince of peace, our fullness of joy, and God's gift of, all, of love for all. We are servants of the most high God. On this Christmas Eve, as we light the Christ candle, remember that just as the shepherds who said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about, we also gather in the presence of the Lord. We respond to the Son's call in faithfulness. Similar to Mary treasuring up all these things and pondering them in her heart, we too delight in the magic, mystery, and meaning of this special night. We find our inspiration by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God.
It's not often that I get to adjust the mic up. There you go. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to make you laugh. Jesus said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In assurance of God's mercy, let us pray together the unison prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletin. Holy God, you sent angels to tell the shepherds about the child Jesus. We confess that we have not always followed your leading. We have not always searched for signs of your love. We have failed to praise your son's birth and refused his peace on earth. We have expected little and hope for less. Forgive us death and renew us once again as we embrace the timeless story of Jesus. Amen. Would you continue your own prayers in silence, please? Hear the good news. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God has called us to live in peace with each other. Let us now share the peace of Christ with our brothers and sisters. all the children who are here with us tonight to meet me down front. Philip, Jamie, Joel, please. I'm out of my league here. I need you guys. I need some older people. I'm, I'm terrified right now. We're going to hear about terrified in a minute. Thank you, Philip. You are my friend. Jamie, thank you. Joel, thank you. Just don't say anything. All right, guys, is there an angel? Emily, you have an angel. Let me see. Oh, I like this one. This is beautiful. You see this? White, the harp. I like that a lot. Have you guys had this for a long time? Where does it go in your house? On the counter. In what room? In the kitchen. An angel in the kitchen. That's pretty cool. I love it. It'll go right here with all our other angels. I love it. So we're going to talk about some guys tonight, these shepherds. These guys were out in this field late at night watching their sheep. I would imagine it was boring because the sheep were probably sleeping and they're just watching over their sheep to make sure they're safe all night. Then this angel shows up 
And I don't know about you, but I don't see an angel every day. And it said there was this big light from God and huge, and, and this happens a lot in the Bible. When people see angels, they're terrified. So what do you think these guys did? What shows being terrified? Go ahead. They're scared. Will, they could have fainted. Very true. Oh, by the way, Abby, thank you for coming down too. I appreciate that. Anybody else? What does terrified look like? Oh, is that quite terrified, Cole? Because when I think terrified, Marty, when I think terrified, I think, ah! Like, terrified is terrified, right? So, beyond the terrified stuff, why would God pick these shepherds out in the field to come tell them about the birth of Jesus because wouldn't you think go ahead please answer oh I got you didn't I do you want to switch spots you got it because wouldn't you think that the announcement of the birth of the Savior, it would be to like really important people like Philip. <laughs> or kings or judges. Or, no. God went to just normal people like us to tell them about the birth of Jesus. And here's the cool part. And told them that this birth is happening. This is where the baby's going to be. Didn't tell them to go. Just told them where it was going to be, and these guys went, you know what? We better go. And the Bible says they hurried. Like, they weren't like, well, we got to deal with our sheep. And, you know, maybe when they wake up, we can call Bob, and he can come watch our sheep for us, and we'll make some time to go see the baby. No, they got up and went. We have no idea what happened to the sheep. Right? The Bible doesn't say the sheep followed them. Nothing. These guys heard about the birth of Jesus and went and hurried and motored. So here it is. Here's the downer. Maybe not a downer. Tonight's an exciting night, isn't it? And you're all probably excited, not for the reason I want you to be excited. Right? Emily, why? Thank you, Emily. It's Jesus' birthday. You're right. Well done. But the thing is, here's the question. This is for all you big people, too. What are we running faster after? Are we running faster down the stairs to get to the gifts? Are we running faster after Jesus? Ouch. Right? It's all great. But don't miss Jesus in this. Don't stay out in the field with your sheep. Find Jesus. Celebrate Jesus' birthday tomorrow. Make sure you spend some time with your family celebrating Jesus' birth. Emily, you have the last word. I know it's a big, that's a lot of pressure. All right. Cole, have the last word. It's Jesus' birthday. Remember tomorrow, it's Jesus' birthday, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you've brought us here tonight. And Father, we thank you for the angels from long ago that went and found these normal shepherds and told them about the birth of Jesus and where to find him. And Lord, we thank you for these shepherds that they hurried, that they ran, that they hustled to get to Jesus to see the Savior in person. Lord, help us to be like that. Help us to run after your son, Jesus. Thank you so much for his birth. Thank you so much for sending him to the earth to be a great example, the perfect example of love and how we are supposed to live our lives. We pray that that stays with us forever. We love you, Lord. And all God's kids say, amen. Thanks, guys. Go back to seat with your family. Thank you, old guys. Oh, you did? Oh, here it is.
Would you pray with me, please? God, as we watch and wait for your coming in this busy, busy time of year where our lives are so hectic, we pray that you will help us to sit silently, quietly, for a few minutes this evening at least. Help us quiet our minds, our hearts, our souls, and to listen to your word and any message you might send us through these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The New Testament scripture lesson is from Luke, it's chapter 2, verses 10 through 17, and it can be found on page 1090 of the Pew Bible, as well as projected on the wall. So if you'd follow along with me. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray together. Holy God, on this important night, we pray that the words we've heard read, the music that we've heard or participated in, inspired by those same words, that it would truly make a difference in our life. And that this time, that you would help me to help us for your desire for us, that we may truly understand what it means to give glory to God. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. The subject of angels, it's what we've been talking about here during the Advent season at First Presbyterian Church. It fascinates people of all ages. It's just something about the idea about meeting a divine messenger that it captures our attention. What would that be like? When I entered the word angels into a web search, I got over 20 million hits. It was actually like 20,400,000 or so. Wild amount of hits on the word, just the word angels. They're very popular subject matter, so I want to start tonight with you thinking about this with me. How do you think about angels? How do you see them? How do you, in your mind, how do you picture them? What would they be like? Maybe some of you have really good ideas. I grew up in the 80s during the TV show Highway to Heaven. It was one of my favorite shows growing up, watching it. So my favorite image of angels is of normal looking, in this case it was guys, walking around, who were basically angels in disguise of normal looking guys. I like that. And others must like that too, because then in the 90s, many of you know another show with normal looking people who were angels in disguise came out, this time mostly women, touched by an angel. You can still see that one on the Hallmark Channel, especially. Those images, in my mind, stand out. That's how I would think of angels. Maybe there's one here. And Scripture has that promise for us. Even we could be entertaining angels unaware. Who knows? I like that idea. Tonight we're going to focus on one of the most memorable angel encounters in the whole Bible. You know it. We've already heard it read. Reflect on it. As Brett did a good job with the kids. This encounter, when the shepherds encountered the multitude of heavenly hosts. This passage of Scripture is responsible for the most Christmas carols of any other. In fact, tonight, we have five of the six songs that we're singing, or have already sung one of, are referencing this passage, this very passage, as their source of inspiration. Five of the six. There's probably never been a more diverse group giving praise to God than there was on that night. The shepherds were down to earth, hard-working, dirty, but dependable group of guys. While the angels, remember they're created too, they're their own creation. They're creation's most exalted, magical, celestial beings. Yet on one holy night. The shepherds connect with the angels. There they were on one night. These two, if you will, cultural extremes. They join together in the most important event the world has ever ever known. And that's why we're here tonight. Think about that. Extremes. We pick up our passage then after Mary and Joseph had found, you know the story, a very unlikely place to deliver the baby. It's important to remember from the song, What Child Is This?, the mean estate into which Jesus was born. Don't forget that. His birth took place in a stable. Some commentators say it could have even been like a cave. This was not a hospital as we'd come used to, or a home. His 
laid in a feeding trough. Not a beautiful bassinet or a a costly crib that we have for our own children or that we'd want if we don't have. Feeding trough. That's how he came into the world. All the while this is happening, the shepherds were in the field taking turns, as Brett said, watching the flock. During the day, they would have allowed the sheep to wander around and find grass wherever they could. But at night, they were all kept together. I don't know if there was a pen or if they were under shade of a tree or protection or some, I don't know. But they were all together to to keep them from harm's way. Three things could have been harmful for them. Weather, bad weather. Wild animals, there could have been wild animals lurking about. Or thieves. Everybody wanted a leg up on the competition and getting an extra sheep would have brought in income. But sometimes, here's one of the main takeaways for tonight. Sometimes God interrupts our normal routines to, hey, get our attention. They're doing what they always did at night, off the radar, but diligently doing what they do. So I want you to consider, when was the last time that you were surprised by God? Some of the shepherds were asleep, others were waiting, watching. Unlike the encounters, as we've talked about with Zechariah and Mary, the angel that appeared to them, at least In this one, it's unnamed. We don't know what the name of the angel was. But when the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were filled with fear. I imagine whatever took place was powerful enough to wake up the ones that were asleep. So unlike the angel encounters that we talked about most recently with Joseph, that he had in his dreams, they were all, all the shepherds now, wide awake. None of them were dreaming. Something or some powerful, we don't know exactly what it was, woke them up with the coming of this first angel. And as often as is the case, as Brett said, well, the first thing out of the angel's mouth is fear not. It's going to be okay. It'll be all right. Settle down. Fear not. Fear not. I think that one of the marks of a spiritually mature person is humility. Humility. Being afraid in the presence of angels is probably a good indication of their respect for God. They were afraid because they knew what this was, or they had an idea. And so these lowly men on the hills of Galilee, with their stinky sheep, well, they might not have been what the rabbi would have called temple-going examples. Yet don't miss this. They were the ones to meet the angels. They were the ones who were told the good news of great joy for all people. So, not unlike the humble location in which Jesus was born, the first messengers of the Messiah, that's what they were, the first messengers of the Messiah, were totally unexpected. Here's another takeaway for tonight. God often has a way of surprising us. In one way is in whom he chooses to do his will. You think you know who's doing God's will for God's purposes? Maybe, maybe, but I bet you'd be surprised. God can and does often surprise us, not just for us, but through that person, that way? Mm -hmm. That's God's way. You ever met someone that You judged a certain way. Oh, I know what they're about. (laughs) Only in time, well, to be proven wrong. This is one of the ones your preacher has the hardest time with. I'm a judger. I always have been. I jump to conclusions about people, and then fortunately, most of the time, I've proven wrong. But I like the TV show Secret Millionaire on ABC. How many of you have ever seen that show? Yep. Yep. Similar to it, but not the same, is Undercover Boss. That one was on more recently. In Secret Millionaire, it's heartwarming to see the way that some wealthy people are humble. And they humble themselves by becoming more aware of others. The recipients of the gifts that they give in the form of money are amazed. 
but the ones who give the gifts, they're moved as well every time. Not everybody has the gift of wealth, mind you. Not everyone does. But all have time, the ability to use it wisely, talent, the ability to share what God's given you special to you, or you can even develop talents, as well as your own tenderness. You can share from your heart. What we can, if you will, we give them. We give our heart. That's, of course, if you know it, one of my favorite poems, a part of it anyway, about Christmas Eve. It's from Christina Rossetti's. The song is in the bleak midwinter. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet what I can I give him, give my heart. A couple weeks ago, Stephanie and I enjoyed the tenors over at Orr Auditorium on the campus of Westminster College, just down the road. And as part of their Christmas concert, one of the members of the group, Frazier, reflected on he really did. It was really cool, and I cheered, and he was kind of being raised in a Presbyterian church in Vancouver, British Columbia, and learning that hymn. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, and on and on. And his rendition of it was my very favorite song in the concert. If you will, it was a gift that he gave all of us. I loved it. When we take the time to give of ourselves, what happens? Elizabeth knows. There's not a time she plays that someone doesn't say, I bet. Oh my gosh, that was so good. We spread joy. When we give of ourselves, we spread joy. So yeah, tonight we're getting excited about gifts. And maybe some of your traditions include opening a gift or two or all of them on Christmas Eve. Tomorrow, by probably 10 o'clock, everybody's <laughs> gifts will be open. But here's the question. When was the last time that you surprised somebody with a gift? Maybe there's a cool big surprise of a gift coming, but there's something about surprise in a gift that adds a whole other element of delight. Think about the angel in this way. He, she, it, whatever it was, must have found it exciting. It knew what it was going to do before it did it told the men the news, for unto them was born in the city of David a a, a, a Savior, you know? He was excited, not just anyone born. So to be sure, the shepherds were surprised by this message, but also the way in which the Savior came into the world, as we've talked about, that feeding trough. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What's that? Unbelievable. If you've ever spent time around a newborn, you know they're completely helpless. Besides breathing and crying and bodily functions, <laughs> they need help to do practically everything else. And yet, the Savior, our Savior of the world, entered the world in that same way. Vulnerable, dependent, and helpless. Take a moment to consider this night the way that that baby has changed your life forever. Once the angel's announcement ends, then the whole host of angels show up, and together they say, glory to God in the highest, highest. But here's a question. Did they sing? Did they Most translations translations use the word saying, saying, not singing, describing the angels giving praise to God. Why do we assume that they were singing? I don't know. Maybe it's because when the earliest hearers of the story, and then guess what happened? And then all these angels show up, and then this holy host of all these, glory to God, maybe it sang, or maybe they in telling it. Glory to God sounded as if, the, I don't know. We don't really know. If you love music, then to be sure, 
just works for you. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Right? Sure. I love music. It works for me too. But if it doesn't, because it doesn't work for everyone, and it doesn't say they sang, think of it a different way. Here we go! Why not? A bunch of sports fans together, excited. We don't know. It could have been like that. The message is more important, friends, than the mode. And so in which it was shared, glory to God in the highest peace on earth among men. That's the meat, if you will, of the message, not how it was shared. And then after the messengers left, the shepherds, as you and I would have, started talking. This is a key part of the story. The angels brought the message, but just as Brett said, the shepherds carried the message to others. It might have happened this way. One says to the others, that was awesome. That was awesome, right? And then another one says, they're never going to believe this. Never. Can you imagine? And then another says, let's go. Let's go now to Bethlehem. Let's go. And then somebody, "Mm -mm. what about the sheep? And Brett set this up perfectly. What about the sheep? Though nearly all of our nativity scenes depict the shepherds with their nice sheep along with them, it's very possible that they left the sheep to visit the newborn Messiah. It's totally silent in the text. This is another one of those we read in there. It's always important to read and reread the text. What's it say? What's it not say? Angels may or may not have sung. The shepherds may or may not have taken their sheep. This text is silent about this detail. But if it's true, I love this. If it's true, then it's a wonderful foreshadowing to the fishermen, follow me here, that would leave their nets to follow Jesus and become fishers of people. That's pretty cool. What about those sheep? They could have left without the sheep. Hmm. Anyone who's worked with animals, anyone do 4-H or worked with animals around here? Yeah, you know. How well does that work to uh, leave without delay? Or little kids, that works too. (laughs) I don't think that they waited on the sheep. But who knows, did they leave their sheep? Again, the angels gave the message, but the shepherds needed to respond. Think about this in very practical terms. The doctor, he prescribes the medicine. Here you go. Take the script. Don't lose this. Here you go. Right? The therapist develops the plan. All right, now this is what you need to do first, second, third. The nutritionist describes the diet. Now, I know this time of year is hard for you, but stay away from this. You can have a little of that. The teacher gives you an assignment. All right, now before we come back together again, we need to work on this chapter and review this. And the preacher, hopefully, (laughs) inspires his listeners. And then what? And then what? Renowned author, one of my favorite speakers, John Maxwell, corrects the sentiment that all's well that ends well. He says it this way, all's well that begins well. Of course, his point is that if we sit around and wait for something to happen to or for us, we're going to be disappointed invariably, disappointed. But if we begin today towards the better tomorrow, then positive things are already happening. All's well that begins well. Maybe that's how you need to think on this Christmas Eve about the coming year. Maybe 2014 is one that you're all too willing to have come to an end. I have some family members who fall into that category. They're ready for the year to come to an end. I don't know your situation, but God does. God does. God sends the messengers, and then we respond to His call. How will you begin the coming year? Begin well? The shepherds had a choice. 
didn't they? They stay on the hillside, keep, hey, can you believe this? That was awesome, talking to each other, or to go and meet the Messiah. Now, our Reformed theologians would say, well, they didn't really decide, but rather once the Holy Spirit moved in them, then they were compelled to go, whatever your perspective. The Scripture here describes a key moment of life change for them. This is key for these ordinary guys. So on this Christmas Eve, where are you in your faith journey? Where are you at? Is this a key moment for you? Are you navigating the demands of each day with, okay, grace? Or is this season's pace paralyzing you? Do you see this night as filled with a memory of angels? Or is it just something to get through? <laughs> Though some of you have shared with me your own angel stories. Really cool. But most of us will never come face to face with an angel. Same things that make this season so, as we sing in another song, merry and bright, are available to us each and every day of the year. Consider this. You don't have to wait until Christmas to be somebody's angel in disguise. Those unexpected gifts. I think it's best to give gifts when people don't know it's coming. The people that bring us joys, the way in which we serve, and the motives behind why we care should all be the same for Christians all year long. Friends, there are endless practical ways in which one can respond to God each and every day right here, either in downtown Newcastle or wherever the Lord takes you in your life. I don't know if angels can sing, if they have harps, and if they earn wings, or if they wear halos. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that we can all be like simple shepherds who told all their friends and family about all they had seen and heard, giving glory to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, Messiah, and Spirit that moves amongst us. We thank you for the unexpected interruption, the normal routine of the shepherds that night. We thank you for choosing the obvious oddity of the shepherds. Because whether, whatever we add into and wonder about, the text clearly tells us they went with haste. You knew who to call to do your will in this, your world. We thank you for its surprising even turning on its head, if you will, the expectations of the time. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the hope that you give us, all of us common folk, that the way in which you came wasn't magnificent or heralded by the court of the day it was totally unexpected and off the beaten path lying in a animal trough probably wailing thank you lord jesus for the way in which we find inspiration every day for the people in our lives who are like angels for the people who have gone on before us who were like angels. And for the people, the young ones that we're raising in our own homes, our kids, grandkids, great grandkids, neighbors, who have wonderful moments where they are like angels. But we all know we're not angels and that we do not become angels. Rather, we are your creation, and just like the shepherds have jobs to do, some of them messy, some of them forgettable, some of us need rest. And yet in your time, through your purposes and for your means, you will wake us to action so as we think about the way in which you came, help us to likewise be again ready when you call. We pray for those who hurt this evening, who really miss a loved one, especially this time of year. Comfort them, spirit. We pray for those who will be traveling in the morning or maybe even this evening. Please help them to have attention that they need to the details to get there safely. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for all those who have provided or who will provide tomorrow and or this evening and refreshments of hospitality of some kind or another. May we think of that act as a very gift in which we may entertain angels unaware. We pray that we would be faithful and that you'd help us to navigate all the ups and the downs proactively, indeed, to begin well. We pray this all in Christ's name, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God comes in unexpected ways in our lives. He, use, he uses unexpected people, everyday angels, just like you and me. This church, for many years, 216 plus of them, has had everyday angels come and go. And you're the next generations. Our vision is to be his light here in Newcastle and beyond. His light in the city can mean so many things to many people. But tonight, on this special night, it means that even as you look at this light, the light that came into the darkness and the darkness that could not and would not and will not overcome it, that you, each and every one of you, can bear his light. Be filled with joy, friends, as you go from this place knowing that God goes before you, He goes with you, He goes behind you, He lights your paths on this dark night in this sin-filled world. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that very Holy Spirit with you be with you all this night and every day. Amen.